So you know what? I, what I obviously you do a lot of things, right? You do real estate, and you do the piloting thing. I do I do a little bit of both as well. I'm very deep into the piloting world, um, and so what I want to do is get to know a little bit more about your piloting background. I want to know first thing: how, how did Ryan decide I want to become a pilot? Like, what was that thought? Well, it's fascinating. So my uncle, he actually, he's the one who wanted to become a commercial airline pilot. It wasn't even me. Like I okay. went through my entire life. Like I didn't even like being a pilot wasn't something, you know, you hear a lot of stories like, oh, but at the age of five years old, I wanted to be a pilot. Yeah. That wasn't me. Okay. Um, I hit the age of 17 years old and I've always liked fast cars and, you know, um, Adrenaline. Uh, ad yeah, I just, I just like things that are like, I was riding motorcycles and go-karts. And when my uncle, he bought it, cause he was 45, he was going through his midlife crisis, he bought an airplane. And when he flew it across the country, he realized like he landed, and I was telling Christian this over the weekend, when he landed, he realized that he bought a lemon. Oh, like, man. and there was no such thing as a lemon oh, law man. for airplanes, but he didn't know how to do due diligence. And so when he landed the Cessna 175, he realized that the prop was out of variance and you know, it wasn't, it didn't meet the specs. Okay. And uh, he was really into like fixing things. And, you know, it's like a house, you know, once you pull back one thing, you realize you got to do everything. Yeah, yeah, and so we, yeah. I helped him redo this airplane from the firewall to the, you know, the new light combing engine. And the, you know, we, we converted it and had the new prop and it was a constant speed prop instead of the fix. And so there was a lot of spool up really quick for me at the age of 17 years old, where I was at the airport, uh, I, started, I got a job there. Then we started flying. And I looked at him one day and I was like, man, because I, I was also telling people that I was flying airplanes and the way they lit up mm -hmm. to me was a clear sign that I was on that right path. Yeah. You know, because when I was telling people, yeah, I'm working at this warehouse or I'm working at Subway, I'm working at this. They're like, oh, that's cool. That's fantastic. When I told people I was training to become a pilot, yeah, yeah. they're like, oh, my God, yeah, that tell me about yeah, it. Right. Same thing with me. Yeah. Yeah. That's and funny. so and so I just I got hooked into I looked at him. I said, hey, I can get paid to do this. He said, yeah. And it was interesting. My my uncle who brought me to that point when I said, well, I want to do this full time. Mm -hmm. I want to really, really be the best. Cause when I do something, I want to be the best yeah, in I'm the world. Sure. Yeah. And he's like, no, I think you should do it slow. He's like, I think you should do it step by step, you know, continue working, go and get your private, then go get your instrument, then go get your commercial, then right. go get your multi, then go get your, cause these are the steps, right? To sure. becoming a professional pilot. Sure. And uh, I said, I'm not doing that. I said, here's what I'm going to do. And I was clear too. I was like, I'm going to go find a school, a training platform where all I'm doing every single day is eat, sleep, and fly all day. That's like, that's all I wanted to do. Cause when I get hooked on something, it's like running through my veins. Like that's all I want to do. So I joined what I call a puppy mill. And um, yeah. that was in Mesa, Arizona. I yeah, am. you like yeah, it, huh? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. This is you. Yeah, man, I know all about puppy mill stuff. <laughs> and so, and so, yeah. so, so like when I wanted to become a pilot, all I did is hang out with pilots. That's right. And it was interesting because some of those pilots who wanted to become pilots, they were partying, they weren't studying, they weren't doing what they needed to do because their parents were paying for it. That's right. Well, I talked my mom into giving me a loan for 140 grand, so that's all I can do. Yeah. And not only, if I didn't complete it, it would be a failure myself, but it'd also be a failure for my mother. And I wasn't gonna let that happen. And so that money actually forced me to train every single day. Yep. And I was, I was 17 years old, I got my private pilot license. I was 18 years old, I got my instrument. And I actually really liked instrument flying, believe it or not, like putting on a hood in Arizona and going flying and just relying on the gauges. Yep. Uh, and then I got so hooked that I joined this school but there's a lot of due diligence, right? Cause I didn't have anybody. I didn't have a guide or I didn't have somebody to say, yep. Hey, go to part 61, go to part 141. Yep. Christian's looking at me like, what, what yeah. the hell is well, that? What, right? what do these numbers even mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. they mean something. Yeah, of course. And, yeah. and so I did kind of a combination and I think people can do a combination. Yep. Uh, but the end goal was, Hey, get enough flight time to where when you're, cause the youngest you can be is 21 years old to fly for a regional, fly right. for an airline. And so that was my target. My target was by the age of 21 years old, I wanna be flying for an airline. And it's cool because I was dreaming about this like like at my house. Yeah, yeah. I would put up the Saab 340, I'd put up the CRJ 200, I'd put up these, these airplanes that yeah. I thought were cool. Yeah. And believe it or not, uh, I spoke it into existence, but I got something better than what I was actually thinking with. I flew, my first airplane at the regional was a CRJ 700, which is a 70 passenger jet. Yep. And I flew, it was, we were flying for United. And I was yep. based out of St. Louis, Missouri, but at the age of 21 years old, I talked to chief pilot and let me fly this jet. And uh, my career, my career exploded from there because I was the guy who always wanted to work. I was the guy that scheduling would call. And so I, I mean, 
look, I, I had a great run in aviation. Yep. Obviously, you're talking about real estate and flying. Yep. Um, but I didn't even know I wanted to become an aviator. Yeah. But then when I did, yeah. I was like, I will be an aviator for the rest of my life. Yeah. 